Retro Mondays. Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to another Retro Monday, where the goal of this show is to turn your Monday into a fun day, oh yeah. Today's old school game is Kung Fu for the Nintendo Entertainment System, which was actually released in the arcades in 1984 as Spartan Axe or Kung Fu Heroes. In case you're all wondering, Spartan Axe starred Jackie Chan, and the movie is known in Hong Kong and the States as Wheels on Meals. As much as I despised this game growing up, once I found out recently that the character Thomas is supposed to be Jackie Chan, most of my anger for this game subsided, but it's still not that good. Not to mention that without Kung Fu, side-scrolling action games may never have existed, because like it or not, Kung Fu was the first beat-em-up ever made. The NES game was actually ported and published by Nintendo for the NES and Famicom, though the arcade and US port of the game was handled by Data East. Okay, so the story for this game uses the basic rescue the princess routine, right? Jackie, I mean Thomas's girlfriend Sylvia is kidnapped and it's up to our hero in slippers to save her. Now the whole point of this game is to make your way from floor 1 to floor 5 and face Mr. X in the battle to the death. Each floor is littered with an endless supply of random guys to punch and of course a boss fight at the end of each level. Keep in mind there are no power-ups to refill your life, but if you make it to the end of the stage, your health will return as you exit the level. Just make sure you don't goof off afterwards, because if you don't climb the stairs, you can still end up dying. Gameplay is pretty straightforward. You move Thomas in one direction, and then the screen scrolls forward. As you come across a baddie, you can punch or kick him in the face. Punches offer more points than kicks do, but the range is very limited. Players also have the ability to duck and jump too, though I would advise against jumping if I were you. Now, what could I possibly have wrong with this game? Plenty. Let's begin with the level design, shall we? As you can see, every single floor looks identical to the last. What's up with that? The only thing that changes is two things, one being the direction where Tom is facing, and the second the type of enemies you fight. A great example of this is fighting the knife guys on floor one, and on the third floor you face angry hobbits that appear to hug your leg. Get off my leg you freak, that's not how one greets friends, help! Anyway, floor two and four feature obstacles that drop from the ceiling or fly at you, but as you can see the stage design never changes. I just, I don't understand what the developers were thinking. How hard would it have been to change the color of the background at least? That way you could fool the player into thinking that the game's a little bit different instead of having the dull background the same time. Now I know they modeled this scene after Bruce Lee's The Game of Death film, but even so, making your way through this game gets really monotonous and so boring. And the bland level design doesn't help this game's case. Still, I'm just getting warmed up with my complaints. For the longest time, this game was very challenging for me to beat when I was little. I would seriously take playing Ninja Gaiden or Contra over this game any day of the week. I hated this game growing up, because unlike those games, this game has nothing to do about memorizing your surroundings or enemies. It's all about constant button mashing, and that's it. There really is no strategy that comes into play for this game, unless of course you count the coward's way of killing Mr. X. You do this by sweeping the legs, then running away like a scared little girl, and coming back and kicking him in the shins till he's dead. Can somebody please tell me how that's being a kung fu master? That's more like a kung fu chicken. Also, the enemies are practically endless, and staying in one place is hazardous to Tom himself. Because Tom is a wuss and apparently never learned to take a punch from his masters. Well, in his defense, the grabbers don't really attack you, so he probably wasn't trained for that. Actually, they just hug you to death like a possessed Care Bear. That's terrifying. The sole reason why this game is super bad, though, is definitely the unending supply of thugs to punch. Because in the later floors, this becomes a real problem because they drain your health so much that by the time you face the boss, you're gonna die pretty quickly. In fact, you won't even have any time to prepare mentally for the battle ahead. He's just gonna kill you, and that's pretty lame. So the fact that there isn't really any way to regenerate your health at all, that's not a good thing for this game's case as well. To be quite frank, I could go on and on why I don't like this game, but of course, that's not the nature of this show. 
Since Kung Fu created one of my favorite video game genres of all time, the beat-em-up games, I can forgive it for many of the game's flaws. Except, of course, for the music. This really gets on my nerves. Only one track over and over and over again the whole game? That is unacceptable. And of course, cruel and unusual punishment, Irim. However, I will admit the easy pick up and play gameplay has a lot of charm and this game was very addicting back in the day for a little kid. Even though I couldn't get past floor 3 and 4 when I was really little, I still enjoyed punching dudes in the face up to level 2. The reason the game was very difficult for a lot of people is because of those flying moth things, but there is a trick to beating them. You just duck, punch them, and then run really fast so they can't catch up. Besides the gameplay, one of the things that I can still really remember very fondly about this game is the player's sound effects, and whenever Tom attacked, it sounded like he was saying crap, crap, crap. As I recall, this was one of the first games to actually laugh at you when you fail. I think the reason why I remembered the laugh is because it sounded so stupid. I mean, just listen to this. Isn't that just mean, but so hilarious? It's so bad, it's funny. Still, a kid can only get laughed at so many times before one quits in a fit of rage and gives your NES controller flying lessons into the TV or up against the wall. Yes, I was a very violent child, and this game definitely got me grounded a lot back in the day. To wrap up, I know what you're all wondering, do I think this game has replayability? Well, kind of? See, once you beat the game and save your girl, the game just continues back at the very beginning, except now you have this dragon icon that appears and enemies are even harder to kill and there's a lot more of them. I have no idea how many times you actually need to go through the game, but honestly for me, playing this game and beating it once is enough for one lifetime. However, Irem wasn't done with this game's formula by a long shot and went on to do a couple sequels and prequels and whatever else. The next game in the series was actually called Vigilante that was released in the arcades in 1988, and it had some ports on the Sega Master System and of course the TurboGrafx-16. And the game was a better improvement over the original, but it was still the same game. Irem wasn't done milking the franchise just yet though. In 1990, Tom would make his appearance on the Game Boy and featured new abilities like a backflip. He even got a Famicom game called Spartan X2 which released in 1991 and again featured Thomas, now going by Johnny Thomas, who somehow ditched his girlfriend and became a cop. In fact, uh, she's nowhere to be seen in the game at all. And I don't really know what the point of the game is, but then again, I don't know Japanese. After that game, the series vanished, but luckily, by the late 1980s, many other game companies had come to improve upon what Kung Fu started, and the beat-em-up genre took the world by storm. So because of Kung Fu, we got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we got Double Dragon, Final Fight, Streets of Rage, and many others, and gamers should be eternally grateful to Kung Fu. While I will always probably despise this game with the passion of a thousand burning suns, mainly because it is so boring, I have to say that I'm very surprised this game isn't on the Wii's Virtual Console, considering that Nintendo published and produced it for the NES. Just so you know, the game isn't terrible, mind you, but for me, I just never really liked it. Even after I found out that Jackie Chan was the hero of this game, it just isn't enough for me to recommend this game to anyone. Don't get me wrong, the game can be really fun, but it just doesn't have enough to keep today's gamers or even the retro crowd happy more than one playthrough. Then the game only takes about 5 to 10 minutes to beat, even without speedrunning, and that's just sad. Believe me, there are a lot better retro games out there. Well, this concludes another Retro Monday. Next time we're taking a look at Aladdin for the Super Nintendo by Disney and Capcom. And of course, I'm joined by a very special co-host. You know her from the Game Station, and of course her channel, Press Hard to Continue. That's right folks, Dodger will be here to provide a fun look back at one of her favorite SNES games growing up as a little girl. So please look forward to that episode in just two weeks. Actually, mark your calendars. The episode will also commemorate Retro Monday's one year anniversary as well. Just a quick reminder, I have a Facebook, Twitter, and album on iTunes if you want to check those out. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. If you haven't already, please subscribe to see another Retro Mondays. And until we meet again, gamers, God bless and happy gaming. Thanks so much for watching this episode.